What's going on guys and welcome to the 73rd Xamarin Android tutorial. So the last video we took a look at the Graph API Explorer for Facebook. Uh, however, now we're going to take a little further depth into it and uh, look into it and, and look at the, the string, the JSON that comes back. Okay, so let me pull this back up just to refresh our memories here. So we can look and see, remember this is what gives us, the, uh, we can set up an access token. The we can set up some get variables and this is what it's going to give back in this case. Okay, so this is what we're going to be using in our application. But the really helpful thing about this is it gives us a practice run and see if, the, if everything's going through with respect to, you know, the correct access token and the query. And then we can also see the actual data, the raw JSON string that we're getting back here. And then by using this information, we can then create a class to actually represent this data then then use something like json.net to deserialize this json string into a a, a a clr object okay so what do i mean by that well this is this is a way to actually organize the, the data that we're getting in okay so your data might look a little different if you add a few more things like so and so all right but here we're just going to have a simple example id name and email all right so a key and a value key value key value and that's much exactly like how uh, json works of course and we've gone over the using the json.net library, but we'll do it again real quick. So if uh, here's some commented code from the previous tutorials, but here we want to concentrate on this, the graph request. And we're using a graph request and we're passing in this, which this is also a JSON object callback, which so what that means is when this is done executing asynchronously, this will come into here, this method, and then give us back the response. All right. And so when then at that point we can do whatever we want with it, all right? And this is the JSON that is going to be this JSON right here, all right? So what we can do is we can actually create a a class that's going to represent this the data that we're getting back. So let's just create a quick class and call it add new item. Let's call it Facebook results. So let's come into code. Oops class and we'll call it Facebook result. And then in that it's going to directly correspond to the naming scheme of the data. So this is going to be a string ID and we'll just do some properties actually. Another string name and another property also a string email. And remember, this is directly corresponding to ID, name, email, ID, name, email. They do have to be named exactly the same verbatim. And that way that JSON.net can then go ahead and map these values to the corresponding keys. All right. So now that we have that, we can now, uh, let's go into here in our component and we're going to want to get more components. So we can come into the Xamarin component store and this is the easiest way to get the json.net tool we'll go ahead and add it to our app and if you guys are using the dotnet i mean if you're using xamarin of course you're using dotnet and i so i strongly recommend using json.net it's a really high powered json library that allows you to do some really cool stuff uh, i'm just showing you pretty much the bare minimum of what it can do uh, but you know this is this is we'll get to hopefully get the point across on on the simplicity of using it all right, so now we have json.net installed. We can come into our oncomplete method and we can do, okay, Facebook result, call it result. And then we can do json convert, all right? And then deserialize object. And we can, and we want to pass in, notice that we have a, we have a generic right here, a T, and we can pass in, whatever we pass in is what we're gonna get back, all right? So we want to pass in, of course, a Facebook result. And then of course the actual raw string value that it that it takes in, we can do JSON dot two string. Alrighty, there you go. So it's gonna pass back this JSON string, all right? And just to make it a little more obvious, what we'll do is we'll do JSON to string. This way we can stop it and see exactly what is going on here. And you'll see that this data, the data right here should be exactly this right here before it's parsed out. All right, so let's go ahead and run this guy. 
And of course, you'll be able to uh, to output the information and do whatever you want with it. But now, now you have a little more of a clean way of organizing your data, and you have it into a set class. So it's really helpful. And you can, of course, add some more properties, add more classes to this. You know, um, do whatever you got to do. But this is, gives you a, a lot of organization. It's going to give you a lot cleaner code. All right. So let's go ahead and get email. Hit the button. As soon as we do that, we should get a callback, which we do, and can step over this code and you can see that down here the data is now inside um, here and it's it's just a raw JSON string and at this point it will parse it out result will parse it out and now we have a Facebook result with the corresponding so your email ID name with the corresponding values alright guys so I mean that's pretty much it just the simplicity of it is uh, really great and then now of course you know if you want to use something you can do name and then it'll come up name I'll just remember to to match up the keys exactly how they are and then now we can come over here we can see that if we add some more stuff like age range or something or address about if the information is available it's going to give it to us all right so then we can go ahead and add another class age range with a max and min property of ints and you know there you go so we can just kind of have a look at the data to see what's going on and then make a class that corresponds to it and then use json.net to deserialize that json uh, string into the corresponding .net object. All right. So there's just a quick lesson, guys, on how to use that. And I just thought it would be something helpful to learn and, and to really clean up your code by doing so. So that's going to be uh, hopefully uh, enough on the Facebook. You know, um, I've got a few questions that I did I did get answered from you guys. If we, we can always come back to this, but. From this video, I'm gonna to try to move on to something something new, maybe using some of the new libraries that, that Android has to offer right now at this current time. All right, thanks guys.